and you should all receive that notification that you're being recorded. If you can just go ahead and click on that, that'd be great. And let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today for what I believe is the fourth in our series of learning experience design webinars. I'm very pleased to uh, present to you today, uh, Chris and Rebecca Quintana. Uh, from the University of Michigan, and they are going to be presenting on two certificate programs in learning experience design that they have developed uh, at their institution. So on that note, I will pass the mic to them and they're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you very much, Matthew. It's great to be here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start by sharing. We have prepared some slides today to talk through. Um, Interestingly, I actually don't see them. <laughs> Try them again. Oh, my slides are kind of, okay. That was strange. I, I got it. There we go. Um, yeah. All right, well, welcome everyone. It is great to be with you today. And thank you so much for joining us uh, to talk about two, we're calling them certificates, but really one is a graduate certificate, the other is a MOOC series, so sort of two collections of experiences on the topic of learning experience design at the University of Michigan. One is uh, definitely underway and uh, already in progress, and the other is just kind of starting up, so you'll hear more about that in a moment. Oops. But first, we'll start with some introductions just about ourselves so you can hear a little bit more about our backgrounds and our roles at the university. Um, then we're going to be providing you with some background about the two different programs, the two different certificates. And then we're going to be focusing on the second one a little bit more, the MOOC series, and talking through some key challenges and opportunities uh, that we see there. Um, we definitely want to create plenty of opportunities for audience participation and interaction. I know it's it's lunch hour, so that um, you know can can sometimes be challenging, but. Um, essentially just sort of thinking back to another MOOC that I developed uh, in 2020 called Resilient Teaching Through Times of Crisis and Change. At the very beginning of that, we put out a call um, through, a, through a post in Inside Higher Education where we asked uh, for, you know, people who are, who were instructors, who were thinking about, you know, how they were going to um, adjust their teaching approaches in this particular moment to provide input and insight into the kinds of things that they thought would be really important to include in a course like that. So we're kind of hoping to do the same thing today uh, to hear, hear from all of you. I know you all have a lot of interest and experience in learning experience design. So wanting to get your, your ideas and sort of make this a, a, a lively discussion for as, as much as possible. So um, I'll just move to an introduction of myself first. So I'm Rebecca Quintana. Um, I have two roles at the University of Michigan. One is Associate Director of Learning Experience Design at the Center for Academic Innovation. Um, so working to lead a team of learning experience designers who are actively involved in the creation and development of online uh, courses at the university. And I think some of our colleagues may be here today. So that's wonderful to see them. And um, also I, I am an adjunct lecturer at the School of Education. Um, I do teach a course in learning experience design, but also other courses like um, educational applications of augmented and virtual reality. So I'll turn it over to Chris. Okay, hi everyone. Good to see everyone here on a, at least here in Michigan, a nice sunny day, nice sunny summer day. I am Chris Quintana. I'm a faculty member at the School of Education at Michigan. Um, I'm in our uh, Learning Technologies PhD program and our Design and Technologies for Learning uh, Master's program, um, where uh, a lot of my work has kind of combined uh, learning sciences, learning technologies, computer science, and human computer in interaction. So kind of a mix of things there as I uh, look to explore the different ways we can uh, use technology for learning. So I think I will go ahead and start. And as Rebecca said, we're gonna talk about our, our two certificate programs and we have certificates in quotes because uh, the, the word can mean different things at different institutions. And as you'll see our online uh, program that we're developing now um, 
uh, it's more of a MOOC series than a, an official uh, certificate, but it's still, um, I think, uh, helpful to couch the work in this way. And so we'll start out by uh, talking about the certificate program that we have developed already at Michigan. Um, it is a graduate certificate in learning experience design um, at the University of Michigan, the graduate school here, the Rackham uh, School of Graduate Studies has a number of different certificates that are open to any graduate student at Michigan. So uh, we uh, went through that process um, to develop this uh, graduate certificate in learning experience design. So as with all the other certificates, it is open to any graduate student at the University of Michigan. Um, we're, we'll be starting our fourth year with the certificate, and uh, we, we capped our program at about 15 students per academic year. Um, and the interesting thing about this certificate is um, it is a unique partnership between the School of Education and the Center for Academic Innovation at Michigan, the Center for Academic Innovation, uh, a, a center which sits under the provost office, which is exploring um, different tools, different approaches for online learning at Michigan. And so um, our current certificate program combines uh, classes at the School of Education. We have uh, students can take some of our existing courses in um, learning theory, learning technologies, other electives that they choose and the core course that we developed for the certificate program, which is the core seminar in learning experience design. And so students will take, uh, take these classes, this classroom work at the School of Education, but they will also engage in experiential work through a student residency at the Center for Academic Innovation. And so this, this is um, kind of a unique approach in terms of the, the graduate certificates at Michigan um, the, it's unique to have a certificate that is two, uh, two units on campus collaborating on the certificate, and it is unique to have a certificate that kind of combines um, uh, the, the classroom work with these type, this type of residency at uh, Academic Innovation, where students uh, work at, at the center to engage in different uh, projects and engage with the learning experience design team and others. Um, and see what it's like to, to be parts of these, uh, these projects going on there. So um, we have a QR code here, which will take you, should work, I think, through the screen. But as Matthew said, we will be uh, leaving the slides uh, with you after today. But uh, this QR code here will take you to the uh, web page for the LXD certificate, so you can see more information there. So that's some background on our current certificate. Um, and as uh, we think back to, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. As we think back to how this all started four years ago and, and kind of what compelled us uh, to do this. And it, it, it really started with the observation that we were seeing um, increased professional interest in learning experience design uh, from students and from uh, industry partners who, are, who were seeing a need um, to have these people with this expertise as they were exploring and creating new online educational opportunities. Um, the, the, the thinking behind this, the work behind creating the certificates started before the pandemic, but I'm sure the pandemic has accelerated uh, many uh, people to, to look at online learning uh, a bit more and to seek out people with um, LXD experience. And so in, as we started to see um, increased interest um, and, and you know, starting to, to hear more from students who were um, interested in this, um, we decided with, with a lot of encouragement from uh, the Center for Academic Innovation to start thinking about how we could go about creating this graduate certificate. So we started meeting with the, the key stakeholders at Academic Innovation and also at the School of Education to start to see how we could create this this unique approach to a graduate certificate. And again, because at, at least at Michigan, uh, you don't see a lot of uh, programs like this. You know, it took a, it, it took a little, little bit of legwork to sort of get, get the, the stakeholders together to see how this was going to work in terms of some of the work at being at the Center for Academic Innovation, some of the work at School of Information, 
always paperwork with these things that kind of doubled with with the the the, the two units cooperating like this but we uh, were able to to get everything together uh, submit our application to the graduate school and it was approved and so uh, with that we started uh, assembling our instructional team which includes um, people from both school of ed and center for academic innovation um, in terms of the, the core instructional team, it is uh, myself, it is uh, Rebecca, um, Jacob Portman from uh, CAI um, is also a key member of the team. And we bring in uh, you know, various, um, various people from School of Ed and from Academic Innovation into our uh, courses. And so certainly the entire learning experience design team at CAI plays a, a pivotal role in coming into class, meeting with students, working with students, um, and the like. So the, the, the unique structure allows us to bring in a lot of uh, different people to meet with and talk to and interact with students. Uh, we started piloting the certificate program in 2018-2019 uh, 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 semester. Um, I can't uh, take full credit for the piloting as I was on sabbatical when that got started. Rebecca. Uh, and others help launch um, the certificate. And we have continued, as I said, we're going to be starting our fourth year uh, with the, the residential certificate program. Okay, I think we can, uh, we can start here with our first chat. I think Rebecca, you wanna launch? Sure, so, you know, we're interested in this idea of how people come to know about learning experience design and how they come into the profession. And I can say that um, in my experience, at least with our team, um, you know, there are many different pathways into the profession. Some may be from teaching, some may be from um, formalized education, you know, where instructional design or learning experience design is taught. Um, and uh, there can be, you know, kind of different pathways in. So we're curious to know a little more about your interest and experience with LXD. And then for those who are active in the profession, how did you come to learn about it? How did you come to know about it uh, and, and sort of understand uh, the various competencies that are involved um, in enacting LXD? And then in terms of this mix of uh, real world and classroom experience, that's something we tried to combine together uh, in our program, but how did you kind of get, get that? How did you, you start to learn and, and uh, become apprenticed to professionals? So what we'll ask is that people start to jot down um, in the chat some of these, these ideas about sort of how you became, became familiar or became um, you know, develop competencies in the profession. And uh, yeah, great to hear some, uh, what we're hoping for a whole range of experiences here um, and just love to know more about um, people's pathways in. So that's great. We'll give everyone just a couple moments to, to share. So Annetta said that, uh, they were, they were introduced for only one module and um, interested in learning more. So that's great. It, was that part of a program, like a, a formalized sort of instructional design program or, or something else perhaps? Curious to know about the, the context of that module. Um, and then Matthew, it sounds like you came to this kind of, um, curious to sort of explore um, what the term means. That's certainly something we uh, talk about a lot in our class. And there's sort of questions about sort of the definition and as a job title, how did that come to be? Um, and it certainly does, there is an increase in that that we're seeing um, now. And mentions uh, being a classroom teacher. Uh, doing a master's in instructional design, working in various roles in, in education, K-12, higher education, and then heard about LXD a few years ago, integrating ideas from HCI courses and readings. Okay, so Annetta mentions um, experience with an instructional design and development PhD and taking in an elective. So that's very helpful context. 
user experience design. So Tammy mentions uh, taking a user experience design class um, as part of a, a CS minor degree and then finding bridges back to learning technologies. We definitely see that as well with uh, our students. As Chris mentioned, um, the certificate is open to any graduate student. So we see a lot of students from the School of Information who have an interest in design generally and in learning. Uh, and so that is one way in. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so Jijin mentions uh, working as an instructional designer previously. So with that title and then hearing about uh, LXD. Uh, Henry says that your residential program seems to have been done in the classroom, but curious about how you apply experience in the online program certificate at the end. So um, Chris, do you, you wanna say anything about that? Sort of how um, we, um, the application piece and how you know moving from the theoretical to the um, applied and the kinds of experiences that students have in the program. Well, in in the current program, um, you know the students take the, take the seminar where we do cover a lot of the theoretical like well we cover theoretical ideas, learning theory, talk about what is LXD, what is instructional design, uh, bring in some learning theory, learning sciences, talk about different design tools. Uh, different design processes. Um, the students then also um, work for a, a certain number of hours. It varies each semester, but for the fall and our winter semester at the Center for Academic Innovation, where they will be placed within different um, design projects at CAI, and they will work with those teams um, to on the different projects and hopefully in doing so we'll start to apply some of what we talk about in the classroom um, in the, the project work that they are doing. They may work on one project, they may work on a variety of projects uh, depending on their interests and, and their, you know, their professional goals, uh, but it's really using the residency to as a space where they can apply what they're learning about in the classroom. Um, in the online program certificate, we will be talking about that in a few slides because yeah. that is one of the things as we are, are starting to think about and starting to design an online version. That is one of the things where we are uh, kind of pushing things to see how we are going to have this type of experiential component in an online setting. So. Yeah, Stay that is, that is uh, definitely something to consider, especially at scale, right, where we were thinking about learners joining um, from all over. How can how can we create those kinds of authentic hands on learning experiences? Um, Frank mentioned taking a winding road, um, you know, taking a master's in instructional technology, then working from web development, project management, software design. We see that a lot, too, in our um, uh, our team, people coming in from more of the uh, ed tech space or the instructional technology space, uh, and then bringing in experience with UXD. Um, great. And Cindy mentions, similar to Aneta, um, being in a, in a doctoral program in instructional technology um, and interested in sort of the overlaps between UX and LX. Um, yeah, call out to, to the learner and user experience research book that was um, edited by Matthew and others. So definitely agree, that's a great resource. Um, and then John Peel mentions or a question, asks a question here, is the residency at the CAI a course that students should register in such as a practicum? Yes, so it is a part of our learning experience design course, which is three credits or a four credit course in the fall and a two credit course in the winter. Students are actually earning credit for um, their residency work. So it's sort of a combination of the theoretical as well as the practical. So that's another kind of unique aspect of this program relative to other programs that we have at CAI, like our student fellows program. Um, they can't take the course, though, unless they are part of the learning experience design certificate. So it's not something that you can just sort of elect into without also taking the other components, the other required courses. One is a course in how people learn. And then there's also um, Another course that's an option of teaching with technology and then um, an elective. So thanks for all your great questions and comments so far. Is this where I was going to talk? I think, yep. I think <laughs> you can yep, break right. to the. Uh... 
Yeah. So what's next? So as Chris mentioned, I mean, we have this this cohort of 15 and frankly, we're somewhat limited by the number of projects that we can offer um, in the residency at the Center for Academic Innovation. We are looking into external opportunities through um, you know, instructional design firms and the like. So we are kind of thinking about growing the residential component, but at the same time, um, we recognize that there may be interested learners beyond uh, the University of Michigan who might want to be able to take a course in learning experience design. Um, so this is sort of early phases. In fact, we've, we've just started the design process. So we can't go into a lot of detail about specifically what's in, included in the series, but we can say that there is a five course MOOC series on learning experience design under development. Um, and this was announced recently that it's included within the future of work collection that's being developed at CAI. And there's some sponsorship from Coursera for an XR integration into the, the series. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Again, it's one of our key challenges. Um, and so an interesting aspect of this for me, uh, even from a research standpoint, is to understand how we can involve our students who are with us in the LXD graduate certificate to actually create, design, develop this series and really involve them in meaningful ways as partners in design. So if you want to read a little more about sort of where we are with the MOOC series, you can uh, use the QR code there, which will take you to a link to a news item that was published um, at the School of Ed there. Let's give everyone a moment to do that if they want. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about sort of what brought us to this point. So we've got our, our certificate that is uh, at the residential space at U of M, but what is motivating us now to advance a new MOOC series in learning experience design? So when I say MOOC, I'm talking about massive open online courses. Um, a series of MOOCs is really one, more than one course uh, that is connected in some type of uh, thematic way. So in our case, learning experience design. Uh, you can earn a certificate from Coursera by taking and completing each course and the entire series, but it's not for academic credit in the same way that our graduate certificate is. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, so it'll be interesting to know, you know, to find out as people are taking it, whether employers and, and others are finding value in that. And we certainly hope they will. Um, so what kind of brought us here? Well, we were getting a lot of emails from people who said, can I take your course in learning experience design? Do you have an online version of that? Um, but they were not necessarily enrolled at the University of Michigan. They may be aware of um, sort of our online portfolio through Michigan Online and kind of wondered if they could take the LXD course through that. And unfortunately, we had to tell them not, not yet. Um, and then we also had assembled an advisory board for our current certificate. And we were kind of receiving advice from industry leaders on that advisory board saying, you know, we think this is a space where there's a lot of, um, at least now kind of, room to to move into that space and um you know this would be a really good time to start doing that so um you know kind of building on their advice uh we took some first steps which were to work with um, cai to do some market research to understand kind of what is out there currently and there are some available certificates um both in the open online space as well as the um online certificates that you can, can pay a little bit more for. Um, and then um, we did an environmental scan to kind of understand um, what's currently available. Um, and then uh, all year, Chris and I have been working with partners at the SOE uh, who are interested in exploring various online educational opportunities um, at the school. So this is kind of one of our, our joint offerings that uh, we're working on with, with them. And I think this is you, Chris. Uh, yeah, uh, before I start, I just saw a question in the chat from Annetta. So is the MOOC available to those of the to people who are not non-residential folks? That's the plan. The it plan will be. is not, <laughs> it will be open to anyone. Um, you don't have to be uh, enrolled at U of M or uh, be affiliated with Michigan in any way to take the online version. 
Yeah. And I mean, I hope, you know, it is, it is in the future. It's, it'll be probably next year sometime where we'll be able to offer that. So I'm, I know that may, may seem like a long ways off, but um, we're just getting going here and on the design aspect of it, which is why we want to hear from you today too, to hopefully influence some of the, some of this and help us shape, shape everything. Yeah, so um, as we are beginning the design of the MOOC series and the, the uh, online LXD MOOC series, um, you know, we, we've started, to, started our thinking on the design, started some preliminary design work that will continue on and, and really ramp up um, as, as we end the summer and start in the fall semester. Uh, but we're starting to see sort of three, three key challenges, three opportunities um, to to think about how we can incorporate some of the, the ideas um, from the residential certificate in the online version, and to, you know, to, to just think about how we might push a little bit as to, in terms of what we can do effectively online. And so uh, you know, we'll go through each one of these, but you know, thinking about the, 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 the content and how we're going to develop and shape the content that we teach for the uh, online version, thinking about how we continue to involve students as design partners in developing um, the, the MOOC series. So taking uh, you know, a bit of a participatory design approach here. And then uh, the bullet where we say we're how to push the online envelope, how do we push the envelope a little bit online um, by exploring some avenues that um, have been uh, either more complex or haven't really been seen in the online space, but it is something we, you know, these are things we really want to include in the certificate. So um, doing some thinking there about sort of uh, pushing things a bit. So we'll start off by looking at the content and how we're going to develop and shape the content for the online certificate, which will certainly uh, be inspired by based on the, uh, the, the residential graduate certificate program. Um, so some of the things we, we do talk about, I, I've mentioned these in passing already, but some of the things we have been discussing, um, I guess, first off, we don't have a bullet in it, but what is learning experience design? The question Matthew raised earlier is sort of thinking about how we um, are sort of melding together, bringing together and integrating ideas from instructional design and the learning sciences and maybe uh, even you know, some issues around uh, human-centered design, uh, user experience design from human-computer interaction. So we, we do start out every semester by just exploring uh, this idea of what is learning experience design, reading, uh, what, uh, reading some uh, recent work on, on the, the relationship between LXD and, and instructional design. Um, but when we do start to cover um, you know, a lot of theories of uh, learning theories, motivation theories, uh, to uh, to show that uh, you know there's there's different perspectives on how to support learning and what is learning and how do we sort of draw on this range of theoretical ideas for our design work as we're designing uh, resources and, and instructional learning experiences. Um, we'll talk about design uh, design process, design ideas. So you know when we're thinking about learning design, what are the practices? What are the heuristics? Uh, what are the habits of minds of, of designers? What are the mindsets that uh, that a designer takes um, when designing for learning? And how to you know when we're when we're doing learning technologies and online learning, uh, some of the things I discuss in my uh, learning technology design class is the this relationship between uh, designing for learning and how to. Uh, provide some challenge in the learning experiences that we design for students um, and how to scaffold uh, learners through these different uh, different learning experiences, um, but how that sort of resonates with a technology, a human-centered technology approach where you're trying to make technology use as easy as possible. And so this idea of ease of use applying to our tools, but not wanting to make the learning experience as easy as possible, wanting to leave this challenge. So how do we think about designing for learning and the different practices and processes uh, that we can engage in? Um, we always like to look at the, the, the world of learning technologies and looking at uh, the different affordances that different technology and technology-based approaches have taken in the past. Um, I always like taking a little bit of a historical view, looking at what we've done with technology um, 
uh, so to help inform uh, you know what what we can still do what we can you know draw from but what we uh, new ideas we need to bring in and we need to address and and then we talk a, a bit about assessment and evaluation if we're going to design learning experiences how do we know those learning experiences worked how do we know they led to learning um, and so we do have a, a, some discussion on assessment and evaluation so those are it's not an exhaustive list but those are some of the kind of the big ideas in terms of content that we uh, talk about now and that we want to make sure we bring in uh, to the online um, MOOC series um, and then there's also topics and content that that you know we're thinking about um, now that we're moving online um, how do we do this at scale and so um, you know taking into consideration how do we you know think about learning learner motivations experiences and expectations how do we integrate uh, the material on design tools we have our students go through exercises where they use different conceptual tools they design learner personas they they engage in in active work uh doing these uh, small design experiences uh you know that works well for our in-person or residential certificate but how do we still um have those kinds of experiences when we're now going to design online and design at scale um, and then similarly um, we talk a lot about incorporating uh, principles of diversity and equity and and inclusion and justice into design how do we how do we uh, you know take an equity mindset when we're designing our learning experiences and so again all of these uh these ideas that we're able to do in our class with a smaller group um trying to now explore ways of um doing these same kinds of things online at scale and how do we Sort of create these these same kinds of learning experiences for our students as they are designing learning experiences of their own, and so um, I think that's one of the the challenges that we're we're uh, thinking about right right as we start our design process with the with the MOOC series about how do we do a lot of these um, these active um, experiences online at scale. And so I think that will lead us to another short sort of uh, discussion point here that we'd like to hear from you. Um, and if you think about the uh, key ideas about learning experience design that you, you, know, you feel, okay, we're going to be uh, teaching uh, the students, what are some of the core key ideas about LXD that we should not, we definitely should not miss? And do you see any uh, challenges, advantages, possibilities uh, for teaching these things um, at scale online. Uh, so we will stop, pause here a bit to hear from you and see what are some of the ideas you may have. As Matthew said, it's not just user experience, and that is uh, that is definitely um, you know a key point that we want to make. And it is interesting that um, uh, we do get a number of students from our School of Information. School of Information at Michigan is the, uh, the the school that has the degree in human computer interaction and user experience design. Um, and so uh, it's an interesting mix because we'll have uh, students from the School of Information who bring that user experience background and then it's now seeing um, how to think about designing for the learning experience you still want to think about ideas of user experience but again there there's some compatibilities but sometimes there may be some conflicts about just uh, strict user experience design and bringing in learning experience so I think those are um, uh, those are some some topics that we uh, bring in uh, and uh, Tammy says, yes, design thinking mindsets and methods. And we, uh, you know, that is definitely something we, we start out with early in the semester, just the different, um, I use the word process. We're always a little careful about process. I don't, because I, I don't want design to seem like some linear path that one takes, but rather here are the different ideas that we need to think about as we're designing and how do we navigate through this space of activities of design activities um, 
as we uh, design our learning experiences. Um, Henry, a uh, good point here about task management skills. Yes, task management, project management, um, things like that. I, we haven't done as much formally. What do you think, Rebecca, as much as they may see some of that in the residency, but I think that's yeah. an area where we could add more. Um, yeah, I think that's an area we could add more. I, I mean, our particular um, set up at Academic Innovation is we have groups of where we have a design management team that kind of takes on more of the project management work, allowing the LXDs to focus a little bit more on the, the design aspect. But that is not the case, you know, in, in all work situations at all. So definitely thinking about some of those other skills that need to be um, brought into this, I think is a great, great suggestion here. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's task management, working with teams, right? How to work, you know, how to work on a team, how to work with other teams, kind of those sort of day-to-day -day, um, aspects of being on a design team and being uh, uh, working with others. So, um, and then it says design thinking as a process, iterative and user-centered. Yes, um, you know, kind of, again, that, that idea of iterative design, that design is this iterative, messy, um, uh, you know, sort of opportunistic, non-linear path. And um, uh, uh, socio-cultural elements, yes, bringing in how people learn. Um, and again, trying to connect uh, theoretical ideas about uh, learning theory, but how do, how do we enact those ideas in practice? Um, and then a teaching scrum principles. I have not thought about that. But uh, kind of again in this idea of pragmatic design approaches, you hear a lot about, especially these days, agile design is another term that we hear a lot of. And um, trying to separate what what is what are the core things out of these different uh, design ideas that we want to um, make sure our students learn. And says understanding how learning happens with uh, different kinds of tasks, demands, concepts. Yeah, understanding learner needs, learner motivations. Yes, all of all of that. And I like how you said it here—a toolbox of techniques, because that's definitely how how we try and describe it to our students. That um, we can talk about all of these, uh, you know, design personas and uh, design scenarios and scenario-based design. We talk about all these things, but it's always important to let students know this is part of your toolbox. There, I can't tell you exactly, follow this exact process and you will get to the end. It's, it's not that simple, but you have to develop these theoretical and practical uh, tools that you have in your toolbox and trying to help students see and understand when to use these different tools um, is, in, is, is part of what we want to do. And again, yes, Scrum, Agile, um, all of these kind of design, um, design methodologies and design perspectives and, and drawing out of those the key points that we want our students to learn. Um, Evidence-centered design or learning engineering. So learning engineering, another, uh, so we were talking about what is learner, learning experience design and now we have learning engineering as another, another phrase that is starting to make its way um, and so, uh, yes, that's, that's something to see. Yeah, Evidence-centered design, I like that. And I think that connects with our discussions on assessment and evaluation. Um, and so, uh, socio, Tammy says, socio-technical pedagogical usability, ease of use from a technological perspective, but not, yes, I, that's exactly what we try and get. That tightrope for a designer of learning technologies to walk, that you, you want ease of use in the technology, but you don't want ease of completion in the pedagogical uh, learning activities. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, something that's key. Yeah. All great ideas. Thank you. I think these are all wonderful ideas that uh, giving us some, some good ideas of our own. So, uh, so that's the, the first challenge and opportunity that we're thinking about. And uh, now we'll move on to our second idea. I think Rebecca will take this one. Yeah, so, so this is uh, a way to sort of think about both the um, graduate certificate and the MOOC, MOOC series together, um, thinking about students as, as design partners or partners in design. Um, and this kind of harkens back to some of some of our earlier work, um, you know, design-based research, where 
um, at least in my experience and also Chris's experience, working very closely with uh, teachers who are um, implementing some of the learning technologies that are being developed, really understanding um, their, um, their needs, their, their context, and sort of creating uh, an experience that will be well suited um, given you know, the way that they're articulating um, the needs of their students and the particular contextual factors um, in their various classrooms. Uh, so this is kind of a, a tradition and, and participatory design as well um, is another area that's kind of related. But um, more recently, I've been thinking about students as partners in design. Um, this is something that we've done a little bit at CAI uh, in terms of actually um, asking students to be involved in the not only the design but actually the, the teaching of some of the online learning experiences. So one example is uh, an act on climate MOOC um, that was created when I first joined the center as a learning experience designer, um, meeting every week with students and their, and their um, instructor and sort of helping them uh, to shape the design of an online learning experience. And some of them uh, came on as experts in the course. Some of them were interviewing experts, um, but each of them had a role to play in terms of writing content, um, thinking about the themes, thinking about the structure and all of that. So that was a very fruitful experience, a very rich experience. Um, we're writing about it currently. Um, our paper is, is under review. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to share that in the near future. But um, we're inspired by that to think about, you know, how is it that our students who are, you know, learning to become a learning experience designer, so they may not have some of the expert level knowledge that we talked about last week, uh, I mean, last seminar here, a webinar, um, but they still have a lot to offer in terms of their, their lived experience, maybe teaching experiences, um, user experience design, all of that. So how can we bring them in to the design process in a meaningful way um, to, to really help to, to shape um, and develop the material? Um, so we've you know, we offer as much as we can authentic learning opportunities for graduate certificate students in our program to work alongside faculty who may be developing online courses, but not all of those situations will kind of open up to the students sort of the ability to really um, contribute ideas in ways that that are going to be used and sort of um, acted upon so, some faculty may be more receptive to that, but um, this is a little bit more unique because we have the ability to really bring the students in and say, hey, we're going to work together. You are our partners in design on this. Um, and so we started to do this already um, with last year's cohort of students, um, even before we began our uh, official kickoff design process. Uh, we engaged the students in what we called a series of design intensives. Um, so every week uh, we would take a topic like um, equity by design and we would really kind of think, you know, what does this mean for this series? How can we sort of, um, in, you know, implement these ideas? How can we really ensure that we're designing with equity in mind from the beginning? Um, and also with a deep dive as well as sort of part of the, the content, the learning within the series. Um, and so it was very rich. We actually developed a number of personas there, learner personas, kind of did some learning outcomes, drafting, um, sort of high level drafts, many different kinds of visual representations, sticky notes, mural boards, and all of that uh, to kind of lay out the space. So we're, we feel in good shape, we're ready to start. But the, the challenge is that that was last year's cohort of students. And we have now a new cohort of students coming in. So we wanna make sure that you know both our students from last year and our new graduate certificate students coming in, uh, one who, who I think is here today, Zhijin, um, you know, have the opportunity to sort of build on the work that the students before have done. So this is a kind of an interesting design challenge to me um, to make sure that, you know, all who are involved see themselves in the work and see the, sort of the impact that they have made. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's up to, to Chris and I to sort of guide that and shape that. And, you know, as as, as ideas come up and, um, you know, we go in different directions, how do we kind of bring that all together in a way that creates a coherent um, learning experience? So, um, yeah, so just, just from a research standpoint, I'm, I'm very interested in this idea. 
Uh, and, you know, as, as I mentioned, our students, even at the beginning of the year, moving toward the end of, of the year in the academic program are moving from, you know, from novice to expert over time. Um, so how can we kind of bring in uh, students at where they are, you know, meeting them where they are at, at various phases of their professional development, their career trajectory? Um, so I guess our next question is actually related to this, this topic. Um, I'm curious to know what you all think of sort of bringing in students as designers, as partners and designers in, in this, um, for this MOOC series. Um, have, you, have you taken this approach before? Um, what relevant experiences do you have in this area? What advice might you have for us? Um, questions, concerns, um, you know, in terms of actually being able to implement this. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the the, no, the metaphor of, of tightrope kind of again comes comes to mind. You know, it's it's an aspiration. It's it's ambitious. It's worthwhile, but it's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky to get it right. And um, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. I think to really make make it um, an effective and rewarding experience for everyone. Yeah, so let's wait a moment or two for, for any other thoughts that might come in on this topic. Yeah, again, it's, it's that sort of balance, right? Of, you know, guiding and like honoring the ideas of the students, but at the same time, um, you know, using it as a learning opportunity to to hopefully, um, you know, create a, an out, an outcome that is both representative of their ideas, but also evidence evidence based, as as we mentioned earlier. And efficiency is challenging with co design. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks, Annette for, Annette, for that comment. I, I do I do feel like this is a safe space for the students to take risks, um, maybe in more so than in other other projects. Um, just because of sort of our, our openness to this idea. Grading the process. Grading the process for the first part. Um, feel free to say more about that, Anetta, if you mean like- uh, Yeah, um, it's gonna be yeah. easier for me to say this please out do. loud. Yeah. I am so sorry. Yes, so um, I teach a service learning and team-based learning course. Right. And, um, and I'm now, because I am complicated or just make life miserable for myself, I'm gamifying it. Mm -hmm. uh, because one of the things that we find in a flipped classroom is students don't um, engage necessarily in the work to make the activities in the classroom as productive as they could be. And so um, one of the things that I have to say over and over, and I tell the students the minute they walk in this class, this is not a class you've ever been in before. Yeah. It is about a process. And as long as you engage in the process, you're not going to flunk. If you don't engage in the process, you will get the grade for not engaging in the process. Mm -hmm. And that it is a product after you meet with real life people. Um, I, I bring in CEOs, executive directors, chief financial officers. I bring people in the field in and I give them feedback. And um, they, it, because it's service learning, we work with an actual partner, business partner mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, it is at, after they get the guidance of, all right, here's what we want you to focus on until the end of the semester, then it becomes product-based. Now we care about what the product looks like and they're green, they're undergraduates. It's really okay um, because again, I really emphasize and, and you have to think about this. In theory, grading a process is difficult. You know, you've gotta be comfortable to allow them to fail. You've gotta be comfortable allowing them to recognize their mistakes and what it means to be iterative because they don't get iterative either. They're like, we're doing it again. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. Yes, you are. And each time you're mm -hmm. getting somewhere, you just don't realize it like we realize it. Because I'll bring judges back, or coaches back to give them feedback at midterms that are like, whoa, this was not where you were, were at three weeks ago or four weeks ago. And then back at the end of the semester, so mm -hmm. that the judges are, and coaches can be impressed by the movement. You know, so that's that's what I mean by you've really got to think about processes. Okay, Matthew's telling me to shut up. I'm shutting up. <laughs> well, that was extremely helpful, Annetta, and and a lot of what you said resonated, um, particularly giving them like consequential opportunities to present, like to um, people who may have expertise or who may be sort of invested in different ways in the project. So, Matthew, we have four minutes to the end of the webinar. Is that right? 
three minutes. Yep. Okay. So we're going to wrap up, but um, I think we can briefly just sort of talk about this idea of what we want to do both in the MOOC space, which has its own challenges and the online, which is part of the MOOC space um, in terms of bringing this to life. So Chris, do you want to say just a word or two here? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, real quick to wrap up as we are thinking about the online version. So one of the challenges we're we're trying to think about is um, we've talked about the residency that our, our students go through um, our, in our residential program. Can we create this same sort of residency idea or some aspect of experiential learning um, in the online space as we as we move to the MOOC uh, space? And again, some of our um, advisory board members in industry have have kind of pushed us in this direction also to think about, well, they may be able to host uh, some of the students as as residents, but do it in an online manner. And so um, that's one of the that's one of the issues that we're uh, grappling with right now, because we don't want to lose that experiential idea, but we want to see it, can we do it well um, in an online setting at scale. And then the second piece is how do we start to incorporate new technologies into the online experience to support instruction, to support learning? Uh, one example is XR, extended reality, which encompasses virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Um, and we are exploring some ideas here. And when I say virtual reality, what I mean come to mind is wearing the headset and the gloves, and that could be one of the um, the modalities, but it can also be three, 360 degree videos um, on a laptop or other sorts of semi immersive one to one experiences that you could do on a laptop or on your mobile phone. So it's looking at this area of immersive learning so that we can play with some ideas about um, maybe uh, for an online student to, uh, to see uh, or attend a design meeting through some sort of uh, XR modality or some mock job interviews if you want to start giving students some practice about uh, in terms of doing a, an LXD job interview and using um, these XR modalities uh, for that. So this is just an idea. Uh, Rebecca mentioned we're part of this Coursera Future of Work series and one of the, the, the things with the Future of Work series is exploring how we can integrate XR types of tools into an online um, experience and doing so so that we, we don't do it so that every student who wants to do the uh, immersive learning needs the headset. So that's kind of one of the challenges for how to do this online and how to do this at scale to give students a more immersive experience. Um, I think we will just jump to the to our concluding slide since we're at the end. We don't have time to hear what you think on that one, although feel free to email us or, or you know send us a uh, a DM on Twitter, uh, that'd be great. But just to wrap up here, our residential certificate, we will be welcoming our fourth cohort this fall. And so we are excited that uh, to, to get started there. Excited that we're still we're still going well after four years of, of what was kind of an experiment when we started this out. But uh, our residential experience will be continuing our fourth group. And we are aiming to launch the online LXD MOOC series uh, summer 2023 is the target date. We were going to do our best to hit our target date. It's going to be a lot of work, but uh, we're looking forward to that. And finally, um, look forward to continuing the conversation, email, Twitter, or at AECT. We will be there um, in October, so we hope to see some of you there. And uh, uh, we'll just wrap up there. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for your questions and participation. And we look forward to continuing the conversation with all of you. And thanks to Matthew uh, for hosting. So thanks, everyone. Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Rebecca. Really appreciate the insights that you've given us. And there's so many exciting things that are happening around these programs that you're developing, uh, particularly given that you're developing an open MOOC, which is just fantastic. Um, and I will definitely keep my on it, my eye on it. Um, Again, thank you for coming, and we will be uh, creating an archive of this. We'll reach out to you for some additional materials, and we'll be uh, sending you the link to that once it's present. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.